When the pandemic hit, everything about our world seemed to change from the way we worked, the way we socialized, the way we shopped, even the way we spent our downtime. It got me thinking about how this global event transformed our very lives. So I got the chance to sit down with one man whose job it is to seemingly transform things through magic. And even he found he had to reshape the way he worked in order to survive. Join me now as we go on a gorgeous reflection of transformation. My name is Kostya Kim Lab. I'm from Kiev, Ukraine, came to America over 30 years ago. And as a teenager, I started doing magic tricks and I've been doing magic professionally for over 25 years. And I'm a speaker who teaches groups how to think like a magician. So prior to the pandemic, i had been traveling professionally, traveling to maybe 30, 40 cities every year for sales meetings and conferences, doing speeches and magic shows. My life was on the road, but we just had our baby. And so I was trying to settle down and stay at home more before it was cool. And my wife told me she was pregnant with our second kid. And then a few weeks later, the pandemic hit and all of our shows were canceled, deposits refunded, everything is done. Everything that I'd known was just stopped. And, and so much happened, especially over that course of that first month, where the decisions we made and how we navigated the change transformed our lives and led to the most unexpected two years. As the whole pandemic unfolded, those first six months, I watched my colleagues and my friends in, in magic and the speaking world also face the same decisions that we had to face. And so it was so interesting to watch how some people made the decision to embrace change and others decided to fight it and resist it, hoping that things would just go back to the way things used to be. And so there were so many lessons I took away from that process that I know I'll be able to call upon whenever future, you know, crazy things happen around the world, I will think back about this time and the things that I did differently, things that I didn't even know that I would do differently. And the first of those things was simply the idea of accepting change, that there were so many people who were resisting it, you know, thinking, oh, how long is this going to last? It'll be a few weeks, a few months, maybe, but no, we're going to just, uh, we're going to hunker down and wait till it's all over and then things will go back to normal. But not having that knowledge and not knowing if things would return to normal, we were forced to act. And I remember that that first week, you, we kind of went through all the stages of grief, you know, uh, all of those things all in, in one week, right? From denial and bargaining, but we reached acceptance. And I think that that was one of the, the key lessons that helped us. Whereas people I know continue to resist what was happening. You know, when you resist, it persists. And so instead of resisting, we reached that goal of acceptance. And after that first week in middle of March of, of bargaining and being angry and being upset, not knowing what's going on, it, it took us a week to figure things out and say, okay, we don't know, maybe six months is the last, we're gonna live off our savings, we're gonna stay home, watch Netflix, do nothing. But that acceptance was everything. Because the moment that we stopped fighting it and we accepted that this is a different kind of time and we would use this time to, to have family time, to maybe learn, to watch TV, to relax and do nothing, by accepting it, it allows us to instantly overcome it. So Kostya claims it was acceptance that allowed him to overcome these obstacles. Now that may seem a little counterintuitive until you hear what happened next. And I remember distinctly that the day that I accepted it on that, that Monday towards the end of March, when I sat down to do nothing and I thought, okay, this is gonna be six months of nothing. I picked up New York Times and there was an article uh, by General, um, Stanley McChrystal, and he said that whatever you do, you must not hunker down. That now is the time where you need to use digital tools to reinforce the camaraderie in your organization. And I remember reading that and I was so angry at him because it like lit a fire under me because now I realized, well, I can't just sit back and relax. I have this, this opportunity to act. And then less than an hour later, I got my first email asking me to do a virtual magic show. And, and sure enough, the moment I, I accepted doing nothing, an hour later, everything transformed and I went into working harder than I had worked in a decade. But it was new, it was different, it was challenging. 
And I said, yes, I'll, I'll do a virtual show. I'd never done one before, but I connected my cameras, plugged it into my laptop, got a Zoom account towards the end of March. And in order to rehearse and practice for my first virtual show, I invited my clients into the room, 10 people per night for the first four nights. And the moment they showed up, everyone had their kids. Now, I don't do magic for kids. I perform for drunk adults. So when all these kids showed up, I was like, what is going on? And then it was, it was pure magic because I would do magic for these families on Zoom. You know, we have 10 screens up, we're talking, we're chatting. And they emailed me every night saying that that was the best time they had in lockdown in weeks, how that was the most connection they'd felt because they saw me and I saw them. It wasn't just a one-way communication. What I did was I used my studio and I used technology to maximize the human connection. I put a giant TV behind me where they could see themselves when I'm interacting with them, just like I'd bring a spectator up on stage. And so because this wasn't a one-way communication, people told me that they felt seen, they saw others, I called upon them by name, and it became an incredibly amazing social time of human connection through this virtual medium. So I fell in love with it really quickly because I saw the impact that it made. Because the response that I got from the people was that we needed this. We needed to laugh, we needed to see each other. And that's when I realized the power of the virtual medium. And so while many of my colleagues were retiring and giving up on it, angry posts on Facebook saying, this is the worst thing ever, I'm quitting. I was embracing it. And I ended up doing more shows for more people around the world than I had ever done before. And then I ended up having uh, two of my best years in my 20 years of business, all because I was willing to embrace the change. And I realized it wasn't about me, it was about the people that I was serving. So serving his community was the difference maker for Kostya. And isn't that true for any of us? It's only by changing and transforming that we can stay relevant and find that we might even be able to do that service even better. One of the most memorable things that happened during that opening time was I was speaking to an event planner and she said to me, you know, I got into this business to pick table linens, not to learn Zoom settings. And I was shocked. I mean, it was just crazy to hear that because at the same time, I was watching technology companies become event companies. There's just such a valuable lesson in that. The main takeaway is that everybody wants to continue doing what they've always done. We all resist change. We want things to be comfortable and just the same as we've always done them. It's difficult to embrace change. But those that are willing to embrace it, those that are not scared, that are willing to step in and do it, even if you don't know how you're gonna accomplish it or what you're gonna do, simply the act of moving forward rather than standing still can make the greatest difference. So when we're thinking about change and transformation on a business level, it's easy because you're removed from your business. You can think about it and make changes. But on a personal level, it becomes harder to make changes. It was harder to, to make these transformations because you may have been this person or you may have been doing this job for a certain long time. And so, again, there comes a lot of natural resistance. And, and I go back to, to those um, you know, stages of grief, right? And going through those until you reach acceptance, knowing that that's the end goal and knowing that there's bargaining and anger and depression beforehand. I think one of the things that we have to remember is that when change comes, you're not expected to deal with it right away and you need to be kind to yourself and you need to acknowledge the fact that you feel this resistance, that you feel this sadness and this anger and that these are not things you have to hide. Instead, you really have to embrace them and work through them. But I think on a personal level, if you're going to be facing change as difficult as it can be, in the back of your mind, you should know that there is a place you can reach where you have calmness and acceptance and you love what it is that you're doing even though it may not be the same status, personal or financial or power that you may have had before, it may bring you a whole different kind of joy than you ever imagined. And life is far too short to be miserable. And so joy is really what matters. I wanna thank Coaster for sharing his tips and providing a bit of a roadmap. If you ever feel boxed in or stuck in the position that you are, transformation might just be your key out. You know, all of these videos are focusing on not only our community, but also ourselves. And we're continuing these themes at our upcoming art exhibit at the Mills Art Gallery. It lasts for the entire month of June, but I hope you'll join us for opening night on June 1st. I'll be there. 
and so will many of the people that I interviewed and best yet. All of this is geared up to supporting Second Harvest Food Bank. A portion of the art sales will go directly to them. And you know what? They do really great work serving our community right here in Central Florida. They make sure that over 300,000 meals are delivered daily to our neighbors who might be experiencing hunger right now. So I hope you'll join us June 1st at the Mills Art Gallery.